Hey everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't uploaded a video for a while. Um, I've been a little busy over the holidays and actually getting into learning the Godot engine or Godot engine depending on how it's pronounced. No, I think from now on I'm going to pronounce it Godot. I'm going to pronounce it Godot because the logo is a robot so maybe it's a play on the word robot. Uh, but anyway, I've been learning the engine and doing all sorts of prep work for getting into this game development thing, and uh, I'm kind of proud of the progress that I've made so far, um, despite having a bunch of stuff to do over the holidays, so uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about what I've been doing over the holidays, and uh, where I'm at right now in terms of learning the engine, and really going to start this sort of development blog process, and this will be my first official dev blog. Uh, dev blog. Dev blog? devlog. My first official devlog, and uh, one of many, as I continue to learn the engine and refine my art style for the game that I want to develop, um, as well as do anything else I need to do. Um, so I hope you stuck with me over the holidays, hope you had some good holidays, and hope your 2020 is going alright, and let's get started taking a look at what I've done so far. So the first thing I did was to write down as many ideas as I could think of, and uh, I think some of these might be a bit too ambitious for my first game developed in the Godot engine, but uh, anything that I thought might be kind of cool or like an adventure style game that I might want to play, I wrote down some of my ideas for. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to implement all of them, although who knows, it just depends on whatever I'm able to learn as I go through this process of learning the engine and developing it. Um, so we'll see what I get to, but the first place that I started is writing everything down. The second thing I did was to take a look at a bunch of examples of art that I thought looked really cool and would sort of give me a feel for the kind of game that I wanted to develop. Um, a really good place to look for some of the inspiration you can see here was the uh, pixel art subreddit. And even though my game, I don't think it's going to be pixel art, at least not for the first game, um, at least getting a feel for the kind of environments that I want to create. Uh, examples of this kind of pixel art was really good. And just Google searching or, you know, whatever you can do to find examples of art, I think would be great for inspiring your process of creation. Next thing I did was to set up a just sort of basic Trello board. Um, going through the tutorials and stuff that I did for Godot, I didn't actually end up using the Trello board that much, but I imagine it's going to become a lot more useful once I start putting together much more complicated projects. Um, and I guess the first game that I develop is going to be much more complicated, I would imagine, than the sort of Godot engine tutorials that I went through. So here's an example of what my desk sort of workflow looks like. Um, I'm lucky enough to have one big screen in the middle and two vertical screens on the left and the right, so I got my tutorials and whatever it is I'll be working on, or the plan for whatever it is I'll be working on on the left, have my main workspace in the middle, and then on the right I'll probably have my Trello board or whatever sort of references or art inspiration that I'm going to be looking at whenever I'm creating something. So the next thing I did was to actually start doing the Godot tutorials. Um, and this, I guess, is the official beginning of whatever this game is going to be, uh, or at least the prototype phase anyway. Um, so I was really surprised that Godot is kind of easy, well, I don't want to say easy, but it's definitely intuitive to pick up relatively quickly, I think. Um, and it especially helps if you already have some experience with programming, because you'll have some understanding of, you know, the structure of code. Um, etc. And then uh, the tutorials on the Godot website are pretty good for getting an idea of the basics, I think. Um, I'm going to have to be searching around through YouTube, I think, to get some more specific examples of more difficult things. But uh, so far, it's actually been a pretty good experience. In doing the tutorials, I created the little test game that they have for you, and uh, it really gave me a good idea of how the different parts of Godot work together. And uh, gives you a good idea, I think, of the structure of what a game is in terms of how the code um, stitches all of the, dis the different elements of a game together. Um, so if you're getting into game development, I highly recommend Godot and, you know, these sort of self-led tutorials you can take um, for a good primer into how this all works. And as a result of doing the tutorials in Godot and making the uh, sort of little test game in Godot, I was actually able to use some of my own sprites to create a little prototype scene. 
so the first thing I did was draw out a sort of scene that I wanted to recreate in the Godot engine, and I was actually able to get something working. So once I had my little sprite character moving around the scene, um, I did a little bit more digging into how to get sort of some basic sort of uh, Z index, or in this case in the Godot engine, called the Y sorting working. In other words, when you go behind something to make sure that your sprite, in this case the main character, actually goes behind the right part of the sprite. So it actually looks like, in this case, that it's walking, or she's walking behind the tree and in front of the tree when she should be. Um, so that was pretty cool, and it didn't take much to get that up and running, and I was uh, really impressed with how easy that was. So having done all of this, I actually went ahead and created another little prototype of a game. Um, I did this on my free time on another laptop computer actually, but uh, it was uh, actually pretty intuitive. I just followed some of the same steps that I got that I used to uh, get my um, sort of original little prototype working. And uh, Godot does a lot of these sort of GUI and input controls for you. So as soon as you plug in a controller, it automatically maps to whatever your input controls are. Um, in this case, you could use the keyboard, arrow keys to get it working, but if you use a controller, then it just automatically works. So it was pretty cool to see my uh, little sprite character moving around the screen with a controller. It felt more like an actual game that I had developed. So there you go, everyone. Um, that was my first official dev vlog. Um, dev vlog. Dev vlog. I'm gonna get that by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I'm glad you're sticking with me. Thank you if you are. Um, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you liked what I have, and I hope to see you in the potentially many videos that are to come. Thanks.